saw in her life. And they're here tonight on The Late Late Show to dance a new piece especially composed for them by Bill Whelan. From the team who brought you memorable. that memorable, memorable performance on the Eurovision Song Contest, they're dancing at the crossroads with six fine strapping fellas. Let's welcome, please, Michael Flatley and Gene Butler.
Boys or boys? Boys or boys? Oh dear, I want to talk to those two in a few minutes, but let them get their breaths back first of all. And I want to tell you that if you like that and you liked Riverdance and everybody did, uh, there's a chance to get more of the same. Major new production, Riverdance the show, will open at the Point Theatre in Dublin on the 6th of February next. That's 1995. Fantastic, they tell me it's going to be with Michael and Jean strutting their stuff on the point stage, and Nuna will be there with a host of international stars, black tap dancers from America, a gospel choir from Atlanta, Georgia, dancers from Spain and Russia, and the Riverdance Orchestra, and all new music composed by Bill Whelan. Riverdance the show, a major production at the point on 6th of February, opening for 20 performances next year. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But right now, while we give them a chance to get their breath, the good, other good news on the show tonight is that we have a poster cooled off by Trump. Where are you? There they are. How are you? Go over there and sit down. Hello, my love. Give it a kiss. Mm, well done. I was looking forward to that all night. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Have you got your breath then? Yeah. Both all right? Yeah. So far, so good. Oh, <laughs> no doubt. Now, you're off early in the morning, I know, to prepare for the uh, Royal Command performance on Monday next. What, what's involved in that? Um, uh, we're dancing for the Queen at her variety show on her request. In the London Palladium. And what are you going to be doing? We're going to have a full version of Riverdance, and uh, we're going to have the full troupe, all the drummers, and Noon is going to be there. It'll just be, I think, spectacular. Yeah, this is the finale of the show, is it? Yeah. Fantastic. Does it mean a lot to you, that? Well, it certainly does to me. I think that, uh, I mean, uh, it's the most exciting thing that, that we could ever do as a, mm. as a dance partnership, yeah. definitely. And to be able to represent Ireland uh, in England like that, I think it's uh, definitely be a big buzz for us. Yeah. Are you rehearsing already for the River Dance in, in the Point in February? Oh, yeah. You're yes. into that. Oh, yeah. 14 hours a day for the last two or three weeks already. 14 hours? Sure. Yes, it's been a bit hectic, you might say. Uh, it looks like a fantastic lineup of, uh, of people. Tap dancers from America and Russia and Spain. And yeah, we're having, I mean, uh, the magnificent Mosaevs, the Russian dance troupe. We're having Maria Pagas, who is probably, arguably, uh, arguably the best uh, flamenco dancer in the world, mm -hmm. um, and Una, and uh, a, a gospel choir from Atlanta, Georgia, and composed by Bill Whelan. I mean, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. Twenty nights. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it sounds to me like tickets for that would make a very nice Christmas present for people, would it not? <laughs> you yes. said that. I said that. Well, it, it certainly occurs to me it would be, make a very, very nice Christmas present even now preparing for it. Will you be dancing on the show solely with uh, Michael Jean? Or? Well, I think um, what we're trying to do with the show is bring a very new feel to contemporary Irish dancing and incorporating Spanish and Russian and flamenco as well. So at the moment there will be a number of pieces with myself and Michael, kind of on the same line of river dance with the kind of love, sexy Irish dancing theme. And I meant to talk to you about that. <laughs> I'll come to that in a moment. Yes. And mm -hmm. a few other pieces, um, possibly with a Russian male. And Michael will, I think, be dancing with a flamenco Maria, who we Maria just Parkes. mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 14 hours a day rehearsal, that's pretty good going. As an audience, I remember, I was there in the point at, for, for the Eurovision, of course, and I remember the, um, I thought, first of all, the, the immediate stand-up ovation you got must have knocked your boat to the back of the stage. Did, did it feel like that to you? Well, it certainly did to me. I, I was overwhelmed. Mm. I think, uh, you know, if, if you'd have closed your eyes and not even been able to hear the, the applause, you would have felt something from that audience. It was mm. really powerful. Yeah. And did you feel that during the dance, or are you thinking so busily of other things? I think during the dance, you could feel it. I mean, you couldn't not feel it, actually. When I went off stage after my solo and coming back on, there was an actual lift, and I, I heard, actually, a few people in the corner who I was close to kind of go, whoa. Yeah. So you can feel it, and that built the end as well yeah. for us as performers. Yeah, it's extraordinary that one item like that should make such an impression on so many people. It was a marvelous moment. Well, we were lucky to have that platform, too, and... Uh, I'd have to take my hat off to Moya Doherty, the woman who produced it, who mm -hmm. gave us a, an entirely new Eurovision mm -hmm. all the way around. Mm -hmm. And she'll be producing this with uh, John McCulgan. Right. And uh, RT was in from the start, and uh, Allied Irish Banks are sponsoring it. It's, uh, it's very exciting. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Did, did the Eurovision thing change your lives? The response that you got, and in what way? Me first. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies first. Ladies first. I think... 
pre-river dance. Well, it's a very different situation myself and Michael were in at the time. I was studying, I was at university. And to me, I didn't actually realize the magnitude of the show. So I was actually worrying, coming home from rehearsal and opening up books and studying and trying to think of my finals, which were about two weeks after mm. the big show. So um, before the impact and everything happened, I just figured, because what I want to do is act, I figured what would happen after doing a degree in theater to get an agent, what you do then is go to drama school and do everything else. So I never really foresaw this big show. and. But the opportunity is there, and I feel very fortunate at somebody my age to have an opportunity to actually perform and do something that I do love to do yeah. with people with a very good team, I think. And, and something which relatively few people can do. Lots of actresses, not many people can dance like you, Jean. Well, not an awful lot. What about you, Michael? What, what difference did it make in your well, life? Well, I think it's made a tremendous difference in my life uh, in that I've always wanted to spend more time in Ireland, and um, I think my heart is here. I'm very close to Ireland. Both my parents are Irish-born. And, um, well, I've toured an awful lot and done an awful lot of work with the Chieftains, who really, in, in many ways, gave me my start. They're really big stars in the States, and uh, uh, my hat is off to them because Patty Maloney always gave me an opportunity to, to express myself artistically in new and, and, I consider, exciting ways. I first did flamenco dancing with, the, with them. I first uh, used my arms dancing years and years mm -hmm. ago with them, and they were always sort of... Um, Oh, very, very encouraging in many different ways. So um, it's, it's changed now that we have had a platform. We have something to say, and we have uh, many people that are encouraging us to go ahead and go farther and do more with it. And uh, it's also given me a beautiful dance partner. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it's transformed Irish dancing, really, because coming back to the sex, Jean, um, um, you, you re you, you, you're a sexy dancer, let's face it. Should I say thank you? Now or later? You can say, you can say. <laughs> later sounds more promising, you know, very, very much more promising. But you have, you have introduced sex into Irish dancing. It was stiff and formal up to then and sort of, you know, arms stiff down to the side. Mm. Come on, comment on that for me. Mm. I, I don't think it's something you can actually teach someone. So whether I can thank my parents or probably I think, I think what it comes for, I think the expression that now is happening in Irish dancing with arms and yes. head and personality and character, for me, it actually comes from, I would say, um, a passion for the dance. And that passion came from my dancing teacher, Donnie Golden, who I think about every time I get on the stage, because from a very early age, she kind of took me and kind of put every, every little bit into me. So I was kind of like a little map that he colored and sketched and drew on. So thanks to him, I have that passion that can be then further developed. Mm. You know, I think that's where it comes from. I don't think you can turn around and say, do I'm gonna, this, I'm going to be now. a sexy dancer. No, it doesn't, yes, yes, it doesn't, it doesn't have come like from that. that no, no. no, indeed. Michael, tell me about your dad and your mum in Chicago. Well, my father is uh, a Sligo man, and uh, my mother's from Carlo. Uh, my father's a six foot two, well-developed male, and my mother's a petite redhead, but she's got a fiery temper. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, my father always um, is a very, very hard-working individual and raised us to work uh, very, very hard at anything that we attempt. Uh, if you're not going to try uh, to do it properly, and we were trained that we shouldn't bother doing it at all, uh, they gave us tremendous support, and uh, my mother's the same. Uh, I can say that uh, I certainly am much more proud of them than they could ever be of me. And they gave us everything we ever wanted as children. We were a very close family. We worked hard together. We played hard together. And, and it, it taught us discipline in many different ways. Uh, I love them. Yeah. And when did you start dancing? I started when I was 11. And uh, to tell you the truth... That's late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My teacher sent me home the first night because <laughs> he said it was you're just too late to start. But uh, I, I went ahead and persevered. And my mother was... Uh, really she really wanted us all to dance at least a little bit mm. and if the younger ones were going well i was going to go too so yeah i'm glad it worked out that yeah. way and did your mom and dad marry here or, or in or the states there? in the states yeah in the states yes and did you ever find out how, how they met uh, oh they're not much for details in that way and i'm not sure it's something i should get into on the air <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they met in, in detroit i know that and um, I, again my father served his time to a number of different trades uh, before going into his own business and uh, my mother was a very well-educated woman with a business ahead, so uh, they got along very well. Mm. Mm. And what line of business? He was a, in the construction business. Yes. Construction. Started very small. Yes, he did. Uh, he started very small, but uh, perseverance pays. Uh, my father's a seven-day-week man, and uh, the, my brother and myself worked every day, and that included Christmas, and uh, we were happy to do it. I mean, uh, if you see your father out there working really hard and we're getting ahead in life, 
um, the least we can do is, is follow in line. Well, you sure did. What about your mom and dad, Jean? Um, my father is actually the um, deputy chief of the New York City Fire Department, and the impact of that, you, you don't actually realize growing up, you know, your father going out and being brave and fighting mm -hmm. fires and basically just comes home with dinner, so you don't really, now I appreciate it. But, um, and mom was always left home with the children, but now that we're all grown up, she's actually working in a, uh, a clothing boutique. She's kind of vogue, you might say. She has and, her own little And style. you started early too? Dancing, yes. Yeah. Yes, I started when I was, I started ballet first, and then I went into Irish dancing when I was about, I think, four or five. Mm. But we also did everything else, like, like Michael's family, I think. I mean, that was just a Tuesday night activity for the yeah. first year or so. We mm. did basketball and baseball and soccer mm. and everything. Michael, if you don't know where your mum and dad met, uh, how did you meet your wife, uh, Beata? Beata? That lovely Beata, that lovely lady in the audience down yes, there. How did you, you meet her? Well, uh, I met my wife. I was doing a concert at the Royal Albert Hall in London. I was on a world tour with the Chieftains. And I can honestly say the second I spotted her, I knew that that was going to be my wife. I was engaged two weeks later in Paris. What? And uh, we're married now nine years. We were married in Copenhagen in Denmark, and I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Oh. How about that? How about that? Wonderful. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And you got engaged in a fortnight, and how long after that did you marry? It was, it was almost two years because my wife was, is from Poland, and because of the bureaucracy, uh, it was nearly impossible to to get her uh, to come to the United States. In fact, uh, we married uh, just the two of us alone in Copenhagen in Denmark, January the 6th, 1986, and um, then we were only at that time able to come to the States. Mm. But it's better today than it was then. <laughs> tell them, since you mentioned the chieftains, in case they haven't heard the story, tell them about the story of, uh, of singing for President Robinson in, uh, <laughs> with the chieftains. Yeah, actually, uh, well, that was uh, something I'll never forget. We were asked to perform at a private function for Mary Robinson, President Mary Robinson, and, and um, the chieftains were the special guests, as they are in many of those uh, high-profile functions. And uh, we were behind a curtain up on stage, and they were receiving a special award, um, and Mary Robinson was getting an honorary degree, I think. Um, so there were so many Secret Service guys around that are all sort of watching you. You're not supposed to move or blink an eye. You can't say a word. And everybody was kind of quiet. Well, um, you may not know this, but it, during the first number of many Chieftains concerts that I have uh, performed at, I'll come running on the stage right in the middle of the number and start dancing. I just come running onto a big leap and then start dancing. And Kevin Kniff plays his drum and we do a little, uh, like a duet, sort of a yeah. duel. Um, long story short, the curtains opened, the chieftain started playing, everything was happy, and I came running on the stage and danced my little part, and the audience went crazy, and everything was great. And I came walking off, and this uh, Irish-American guy, big brute, stops me, and he says, uh, Mike, you're the luckiest guy in the world. I said, what do you mean? We all went for our guns. We didn't know you were here. We had no idea who was this guy. <laughs> we had no idea who was this guy come running on the stage. He's like, we're going to tackle you. Nobody knew. You're lucky you started tap dancing when you did. <laughs> so um, I could just see the headlines, tap dancer goes out with That's a bang. Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's not a very nice way to no, die in front of the chieftains not. and the president and everything else. It's wrong. Yes, love. Hello. Hello. I was just wondering, how long have you been partners? And is there any jealousy towards your wife, like, <laughs> with you <laughs> both dancing so sexy together? <laughs> well, we've Michael? been partners. Uh, we've been partners since um, uh, since the Eurovision, and we had met each other just a couple of times before that. And we always wanted to try and do something together, but we've never really had the platform. Uh, I'm delighted that it worked out that mm. way, and I feel very comfortable. I'm sure that Jean does too. And um, in terms of jealousy, um, I don't think there's any problem there. I'm, I'm head over heels in love with my wife. And in fact, Jean's boyfriend is here tonight too, so that's not even a problem. She has a boyfriend? Paul, don't blame me for that. There's he said it. There's a couple it. here. What? There's a couple of boys. Oh, there's a couple of boys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. But uh, are, you, are you suggesting to me that you're going into acting now rather than dancing? Is that what I gather from Suggesting? You? No, no. My initial, I don't know what I'd like to do eventually. I mean, obviously, the, the life of a dancer is quite short. And because Irish dancing, like all the Irish dancers that compete today, I mean, it's a, it's a competitive sport. So at the moment, you know, there aren't many professional Irish dancers. So for somebody that is my age at the time, you don't think about being able to do this as a profession. And what I've, I've always loved to do, obviously, is dance, but also to act. And they're very complementary forms. Mm. And um, so I just, again, like, to be able to make it 
professional at this stage is um, very fortunate. Wonderful.